Australia, land of opportunity and sunshine. Australia, it's so big, about the size of Europe, that we don't have time in one film to show you all of it. So, we're going to show you some of it. My some of it. This is a small part of New South Wales. We'll be visiting Sydney and Canberra, which are famous, and also Woi Woi, Wagga Wagga, Grong Grong and Gumly Gumly, which are a little less famous. However, we start our little journey 40 miles north of Sydney in a very small place indeed. One divine halt, unknown in the annals of railway history. I'm here for one unique reason, I want to show you it. It starts here, and there's no, no ticket office, no porters, no gents, no ladies, and it finishes here. There's nobody here, there's nobody anywhere. There's only me waiting for a train. Wait, hist, I hear the Gosford flyer. Any minute now, I have to stop it. The only way is by doing this. Even then, sometimes, it might not. Oh. By careful editing, I managed to catch the right train. I wanted to show you Wonderbind because, in many ways, it sums up my part of Australia. We're only just north of the Sydney suburbs, and yet we are in dense virgin bush, the magnificent Coringai Chase, which is named after the Aborigines who once lived here. People can and do get lost in it. The Aborigines got lost terminally, but I suppose that's, in quotes, progress. So we ask the question, what am I doing here? Well. In 1950, my parents emigrated out here, and I thought they were mad. However, in 1959, I came out to see them, and I went mad. I fell in love with the place. I couldn't get enough of it. The old steam trains took two and a half hours from Sydney to Woi Woi. You could sit on the rear balcony and view, at leisurely pace, the distant blue hills and creeks flowing into the Pacific. Today, it's 2 KON, Hornsby Strathway on Sydney Terminal, number one platform, a four-car double-deck service. The journey now only takes an hour in these gleaming air-conditioned trains, but I suppose that's progress too. I come out here from England every two or three years. My dad died in 1969, but Mum still lives in this little town about 50 miles north of Sydney. Now this, this isn't Aborigine for bench. This is the name of my hometown, Woi Woi. It, in Aborigine, it means deep water. Which Woi means deep and which means water, I will never know. And now, home. I say Woi Woi is my hometown, and in a way, it is. Although I was born in India and live in England. Everyone knows me, and I know everyone, including the porter, who gives me the local gossip for the last three years. Woi Woi is surrounded by a maze of inlets called Brisbane Water. But don't be confused, it's nowhere near Brisbane. It was once very peaceful, but now it's growing so fast that it's almost become a northern suburb of Sydney. If you want to avoid getting lost, it's best to take a taxi, but unlike London, you at least meet the same driver more than once and get to know his name. Fancy getting you, Gordon. The porter said this your birthday today. Yeah, who told you that? The Spike? porter on the did platform, he? yeah. Oh, dear, oh dear. He said the next cab in the rank is Gordon's, so I don't believe it. 
I yeah. can't believe it. Quite a coincidence, Spike. I didn't expect to see you this time of the day. I tell you what, I speak to my mum on the phone and she tells me that everything's moving ahead very fast here. Yes, the district is uh, bursting at the seams, Spike. A lot of people are migrating from the Sydney uh, metropolitan areas to this area now. I remember this road when you could sleep in it oh. and never get run over. That's right. There were so few cars in Woi Woi at one time that the dogs used to chase them like mad. You remember? Dogs they would go did. for the cars. Yes, they did. They but, used to... but now there's so many motor cars that the dogs are absolutely shagged out. They, they can't keep up with it, so they've stopped barking. Have you noticed? That's right, yes. I'll make you straight for Mum's house. Oh, yes. Good. How's she keeping? She's keeping fine. She's about 93 now, you know. Oh. I think she goes out playing rugby every day, though. I can never get her on the phone. Can't you? Oh, oh, that's reckless. the reason. Tea, Mum. Nice of you to recognise me. Oh, well, I should hope I recognise my son. <laughs> oh, lovely to see you. Lovely. <laughs> I'll sit down and get some tea, huh? I can do with this, Mum. And have they tuned the piano? Yes. Oh, that's marvellous. Yes, they tuned the piano. Good the job. keyboard's been clean, hasn't it? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's still very hard to play though, isn't it? He, he's altered it, he altered it a bit so that the tension would be better. Yeah, very nice. Could I have some more tea? Yes, of course. Woiwoi's main street. It's noonday traffic throbbing past the amnesia-making architecture with all traces of originality carefully erased an estate agent's paradise. Ah, this is the simple boy boy of yesteryear, exactly as it was when I first came here, with only the occasional human being looking over the watergirt islands. So happily, progress hasn't engulfed everything, and in fact, one of my favorite walks starts right at the back of my mother's house. Hello. You hear those parrots? Pretty, aren't they? Um, I'm walking up the Blackwall Mountain. This Blackwall Mountain was thrown up in primeval times by volcanic upheaval. Uh, the thing is, I'm going to go up this mountain, I'm going to meet you at the top because it's got a very beautiful view. I might stop on the way. There you are. I told you I would. Upwards, ever upwards, through thicket and thinnet and eucalyptus trees in search of the exquisite. The nice thing about going for country walks is the possibility of a chance encounter with a stranger. This caterpillar is a giant among caterpillars, inasmuch that he's going to feed on leaves, but the nearest leaves he's coming to are easily 20 feet up. So he's got a tremendous amount of courage, that or he's a complete idiot. Good luck, Eric. As you can see, Woi Woi and its environs are a complete mix of unspoilt bush and spoilt suburban development. Down there is where Etalong meets the Pacific Ocean. Well, this is the reward for climbing the mountain. It's a stunning view. And this, where we're sitting now, would have been an Aborigine lookout. They might even have seen Flinders, Captain Flinders, who came up here in a longboat in about 1791, I think it was. He might have seen him come up here, go right the way around the island here like this, further inland. Of course, then, all this civilization hadn't reached here. And the most important thing about this is, you notice the way that they cling to the coast, leaving the hinterland of Australia almost empty. But they're crowded round here, and the density is increasing all the time. It's been estimated that something like 70% of Australians live within a good day's walk of the coast. This in a country almost as big as the United States. It's so different here from the stereotype Australia 
of the Lager adverts. It's clean, formal, regimented, and could almost be the south coast of England. In fact, it's often more formal and regimented than the south coast of England. Holding three, June. Before after this one, please. Oh. Nah, you want a bit of green, love? Oh. <laughs> that high one is. Just try and get that to it. Yes, Phil. The first one wasn't a fluke. Great bowling. Lovely bowling. Oh. Oh. Come on. Lovely bowl. Champion bowl. But in the midst of all this, there's a little sanctuary I like to visit. It's a private garden that plays host to a huge variety of wildlife, most of which can only be seen in cages in England. In Australia, exotic wildlife is in abundance. But even round Woi Woi, the native flora and fauna are slowly being destroyed by dogs, cats, and people introduced from Europe. Wildwoods, as it is called, is the creation of a Mr. and Mrs. Hicks who built their own house and carved this garden out of a dense bush some 50 years ago, creating an oasis in a suburban desert. Well, there's nobody in the central coast that I know of who's doing this sort of work. You're the only one. And apart from that, we've got to worry about getting food all the time for them. You know, they, they eat about... They eat the bread, the cheese, and I have the bread and fat. A few miles away is a more typical garden undergoing spring cleaning. It belongs to Jo McKettrick, who emigrated from Nottingham with her family 12 years ago. Despite strange men in the garden, she seems to like it here. The weather makes it live, makes the whole place livable. I mean, you know, you can have no money at all, but you've got your sunshine and your beach. I mean, you, if you live in the middle of England, you have, if, if it's raining and it's bad and you've got no money, you're down, really down. What do you miss out here most? Go on, say it. Fish and chips. Pork sausages. Pork sausages. Pork sausages, folks. Don't forget that. If you come to Australia, you'll miss pork sausages. What's that noise down there? Oh, that's the uh, flick man. He comes and sprays the garden and the house. Flicking things off, is he? <laughs> Oi, when you finish down there, can you bring us some of your specimens? Not yours, not yours, no. Some of the animals. Hippopotamuses in jars, things like that. What insects have you got then? Well, they come and they spray uh, for uh, cockroaches, redbacks, funnel webs. Ah, wait a minute, hold it now. You loved Australia, but then suddenly <laughs> these you got all these bomb biting <laughs> things. Quite frightening. Is this normal? My mother's got a garden. She never has it sprayed. Well, she's fortunate. We had the cat sprayed. <laughs> oh, that would be. <laughs> now, it's just something that you have to be aware of when you when you live in Australia. What? What do you mean the the red back that bites your bum on the seat? On the toilet it? seat, yes. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen any of them yourself? Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. What was your reaction when you saw your first one? Freak out. Did you scream? I said and did a few more things than just scream. My God, isn't that amazing? What happens when you get bitten by a funnel web? Do you get paralysed? Nausea, or paralysis. And that gradually sets in, does it? How long have you Through got? A coma. Into a coma? Yeah. That's all, that's all I Eventually it ends in death. Are you listening to all this, you little swine? It's unbelievable, the creature, that that size could actually put a whole human being down. Mind you, steamrollers can do the same, you know. <laughs> yes. And you can end up as a bookmarker. <laughs> a much more charming example of Australian wildlife is the bellbird. They're dying out around Woi Woi, 
but can always be heard 50 miles away in the Strickland State Forest, where its delightful sound mingles with other whispering mysteries of the Australian bush. This is the equivalent of hog calling in America. <laughs> The rough translation of this is, where the bloody hell are you? Mala, mala, because you're not getting it quite clearly, and you're not a kangaroo, this wouldn't interest you, but apparently a kangaroos are very keen on mala, 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 moo. I'm sure you, you might like to write that down on a piece of paper uh, for further reference. I mean, you never know if you come up against a kangaroo, you shout mala 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 moo and things go well for you. Milk min. Mummy. My old friend, Mami. Beverly Mami. Spears, a manic conservationist, Mami. lives here. I must tell you a funny story about Mindy. Tell me. And is Louie. The, is this the, uh, the accepted way of, of carrying this the way they're carrying. Is that That's right? That's right. This is Bluey. There was a curly, but curly died. And Bluey got very sick Wait and fretted. They're and a different colour. These are red kangaroos. They're the big reds. They grow to about six feet. Yeah, eight feet. The males and the females, which I've got here. This is a female, the big one. Yes. And the other one is a male. Yes. This is Bluey. I see. What time do they come into season, and what time do they start to mature? Blue, blue, come on. Blue, come on, come on, Mindy. Once we get her drinking here, Min, you want to, you want some milk? There you are. Goodness me, come on, Blue. Blue, 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 blue. This is the one that'll kill for milk. If you give another one a bottle, she'll jump all over it. Tell me, how do you come by them, first of all? Well, anyone that goes out there shooting, believe it or not, they've got a conscience, and they usually bring back the joeys in the pouches. These joeys are the results of, of murdered, murdered mothers? murdered mothers. Is that yes, right? Yes, exactly. And they bring them back to the wildlife, and the wildlife ring different foster homes, like me and other people that look after them. So Come you're on, going Blue. to be lumbered for the rest Come of your on, life Blue. with an increasing number of kangaroos? No, no, the wildlife actually prefer to take them out and they re release them, would you believe? Oh, they do take them quite a way out, do they? They release them where they were found to be oh. shot again. Oh, my God. This is God. what I'm fighting. There's no sort of concept of wanting to be concerned about kangaroos at all. I mean, even though it's the national emblem, I would say that kangaroos have a pretty rough time in this country. Yeah, all these, these are all often that have been brought in from mothers who have been killed, mostly on motorways. As the day wore on, Beverly asked me to join her and her husband for cocktails in their regular evening ritual. Well, I'm, I'm, I really think there's too many here. I believe in birth control and I, um, I definitely consider... Are you getting a bit of smoke there? I'm all right, thank you. Thank you. I definitely think that they shouldn't bring any more people in. There's too many people here now. Actually, you should sit up when. It's all right. I'm trying to be a bronchial <laughs> asthmatic. <laughs> well, then you want to go live at Malora. Uh, I see that, by the way, that you haven't completed the bathroom. No, and we're putting an inside and an outside bathroom. My husband's completing the bathroom, and I've got the most gorgeous, old-fashioned bath, but I get claustrophobia in there. I just love this. I see. So, basically, what you, you settle for a bath, and the walls will follow will follow yes actually we're thinking about having compacted earth walls they're much easier to put in around us would that be to give it a sort of an oldie worldy australian atmosphere an earthy look to this an earthy look to the thing start off with the bath the rest will come it's nice to see australia as it really is this is how it should be Spice. this is the unspoiled australia yes i see well I've seen quite a few spoiled bits, and uh, this is quite an interesting unspoiled bit here. While Beverly and her husband relax to the sound of bellbirds, other Australians share the soft murmurs of the night. <laughs> Australians will bet on anything, even flies crawling up a window pane or raindrops crawling down. In New South Wales, though, they don't have to because of the poker machines or pokies. The Australian version of the fruit machine. They're all over the place. Into them pours a fortune, although few ever win one, even though the jackpot can be as high as $5,000. A person will book a machine and stay with it until it pays off. In one year recently, the betting turnover in Australia was three times as high as its defence bill. 
In one of these establishments nearby, you can even cash your pension on the spot. By my calculation, the average British pensioner would blow his weekly income after 28 minutes play. How often do you play the game? Very often. Do you come here every day? Oh, no. We come down about three times a week, yes. Three times a week. Would you say that was addictive? I yes. Mean, could you knock it off? Are you an addict? No, I'm not an addict. I'm not an addict. He's not an addict. He's not an addict. You're the addict. The addict. Right, how many times a week do you come in there? Seven. Seven, that's really that's great. You can't come six, more. My wife won't let me out on Sundays. Is that right? How much would you say in a, in a week would you spend on the pokies on an average? Uh, $40, $50. $40, $50, yeah. Three times a week, about $100. $100. Yeah. And you can afford that? Yeah. yeah. $500 a week. $500? Lend us a quid, would you? $100. Wait a minute, I've got some. I back Cassidy's mount because he won that one on Saturday. And I can't think our boyfriend, I back that. I back that. The Melbourne Cup is for Australians, the Derby and Grand National rolled into one. For Mum, it's Royal Ascot as well. She's backed almost every horse in the race. That's me Right? Yes, now this is the moment where the whole of the Australia stops dead. All the factories close, all the workshops, all the offices and everybody congregates to watch the race. It's the most marvellous thing in this country. It's an official strike, is it, Mum? Well, it's like that. It's you might as well say it's just like that. Five links the feet of war as they start to accelerate. So Zephyr outside come on, to start come on, to come on, come on, come on. Second last Kiwi. And that shows last Second week. last Kiwi, oh dear. <laughs> Let her rip, boy. Get cracking, come on. My health is up the front. My health is up the front. Kiwi's still last on the turn. Kiwi's last. It's up to the track, too. Here we go now. Into the straight. Come on, Matthew. Come on, Matthew. Come on, Matthew. Come on, Matthew. I don't know what came into you. My word, that was a marvellous race. That was great. Wasn't that good, Mari? Yeah. Hey? It's very exciting. What do you think, son? What made Kiwi the favourite? They must have been all drunk when they predicted that. I've got it. I've got it with Peter, too. I've got it with Peter. I've got it. When you want to save money buying jewellery, electrical goods, or just about anything, you need Sydney's biggest general auction listings. So where are you going to look? Herald Classified. Are you feeling a little off colour, a little irritable, listless? It could well be caused by the air pollution. Bondi it's Beach, Sydney. one of the most famous beaches in the world. Here you can enjoy miles of sand, blue skies, and the highest recorded rate of skin cancer on Earth. And Australia is not slacking in other areas. Liquid shit is pumped into the sea, and when the wind and tide act in harmony, it all floats back towards the shore. It's an amazing thing. It took Europe, what, 2,000 years to reach this standard of pollution, and yet it only took Australia 200. Australia, a nation on the go, and it's all going in the sea. Pollution control consists of occasionally closing the beaches. This is, of course, a great advance on Britain, where shitty beaches can be used at all times, and where pollution control consists of closing your mouth. Sydney has all the amenities of a large modern city. Skyscrapers, traffic jams, drugs, Local radio. Mike Bailey, 2GB News Talk 87.
A Soviet newspaper has suggested that AIDS could be the result of CIA and Pentagon experiments. The weekly paper of the Soviet Writers' Union has published a long article on AIDS, topping its previous closing peak of 1,369.3, reached two weeks ago. News time is six minutes past nine. Now with the weather, here's Mike Bailey. Good morning, still looking good out to the west of Sydney, but some cloud about the coast and the southern suburbs, and that will tend to drift a little further inland as the winds shift more around to the south and southeast. Of Europe. Hello world, this is John Laws. Good morning and welcome to our show. We're going until midday. Our telephone number 269 0669. It's a very special show for you today because the famous British humorist Spike Milligan is searching for the great Australian joke. Spike Milligan, as you know, born in India, carries an Irish passport, gained fame as one of the most brilliant British humorists while his mum lives in Woi Woi. It is very small wonder that sometimes he does appear confused, but not at the moment. Spike Milligan, good morning and welcome, and it's good to see you. Good morning, John. It's good to see you. And as you're called by mother, my, my John Laws. <laughs> How do you appeal to such old women as well as young ones, John? I don't know, but I'm, I'm pleased. I don't know what stuff you're taking, but I'd like half a bottle of it. OK, but what we want is a typical Australian joke. Well, we... The, we, there's, well the, the typical if, Australian... The, if there well, is The, the, the typical thing. Australian joke is, uh, is one mildly rude, but not too rude. Uh, it's, um, there's a girl pregnant standing on Sydney Harbour Bridge, and she's about to chuck herself into the harbour. And the chap, her boyfriend comes up and says, he says, Molly, what are you doing? He says, can't you see? I'm pregnant. He said, well, what are you going to do? And she says, I'm going to chuck myself off the bridge. He says, my, he said, not only are you good in bed, but you're also a good sport. <laughs> that's, an, that's a good Australian joke. Honestly, there must be better jokes than this. Now, tell them another 269 -0669. My guest is Spike Milligan. And he's in search of the great Australian joke. We might well have it here, Spike. Are you ready? We're standing by for the great Australian joke. Countdown starts now. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello. Hello? Yes. Hello. Who's that? John Laws. G'day, Jack. How are you, son? Is that you, Warwick? It's Warwick. Warwick, can I give him a second name? No, not necessary. Warwick will do. Warwick, well, I've got... Now, this, this joke. Yeah? Uh, are we on the air? Yes, we are. OK, I'll tell you the joke. You ready? I'm ready. We're well, ready for it, Warwick. Who's that? Mr. Milligan. Oh, good day. Good day, Warwick. All right, I'll tell you the story. Right, now there's this Aussie guy crossing the Nullarbor with his dog. Right, he's got plenty of water and he's got all his cooking things, you see. But he runs out of food. Halfway across, he runs out of food. He looks down at his dog and he says, Mate, I'm sorry. It's you or me. So he takes, he kind of takes out his gun, see, and sounds awful, but he, bang, he has to kill his dog. Poof. Boils him up, right? <laughs> and then he eats it, and he's left with this little pile of bones, like like a little pyramid of bones, you know, Jack. And he says, God, Rover would have loved those bones. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that, Jack? Listen, do you know how long it's taken to get on this show? No. Four years. <laughs> Four years I've been... We got a very old telephone operator here. That's why she's very old, aren't you? Even very old. <laughs> <laughs> that's very good, Spike. I like that. But gotta get back to work. We have a smoke out here. Okay, Warwick. <laughs> Canberra, Australia's federal capital, deep in the middle of somewhere, well to the south of Sydney. Well, it seems that all every city in the world has to have a telecommunications tower. It's terribly copy and it's very, very boring in the long run. That's right, Spike. He just said it would be an eyesore, the environmentalists fought it, and when we were in government there was long delays before it got underway. And it's a good view, but I mean, when you look at it, it is a Let me guess. like a parsnip. Has it got a revolving restaurant? Yes. Of got course, a it has a revolving restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Prince Philip said it was a city without a soul. How do you go along with that? Well, it's got all kinds of names. A lot of people criticise Canberra. Of course, some say it was a cemetery with lights on. And a famous statement by Dr. Everett in the war year from around his 17,000 here, he said, it's a dreadful place, he said. It's as hot as hell in the summer, cold as ice in the winter, and about as interesting as wandering around with a bag over your head. <laughs> Canberra was planned by an American on ideas borrowed from Washington, D.C. It's in a beautiful setting, but somehow it's very boring. Somebody once said there's nothing wrong with Canberra, except that it's, it's there. 
meeting of the ways, and for respectability, I think it's accepted as meeting of the ways. It's better than boobs, isn't it? <laughs> I you can't imagine. I mean? oh, mind so. you, I, I should imagine they made a few boobs in there. Yeah, that's right. It might have been <laughs> an appropriate name. Oh! <laughs> Those of you with an ear for the subtleties of political debate will appreciate the debt that Australia's Parliament House owes to our own Mother of Parliaments in London. There's so many over there that want to undermine this bloke and stab him in the back, you'd lose count. Don't you think, with the sort of the, the atmosphere of lack of sort of entertainment and things like that around here, don't you think that the Prime Minister's judgment must go awry at times here? Well, you can get aloof from society here, you're away from the hurly burly, and you can uh, get a false impression of what the society thinks, and that's well, one of the things well, about it. Why do they run like hell? The moment the bell rings on a Friday night, they're onto those planes yeah. and back to Sydney, they can't wait to leave the yeah. place. Yes, about the hardest thing to find here after the bells ring on Friday as a politician. Tonight. I must ask you, do you get the, the BBC TV show here, Yes Minister? Oh, we do, yes, and. Uh, in England, I think it's a bit of a comedy, and in some parts of Australia, but in Canberra, it's a documentary, and I'd say compulsory viewing. <laughs> <laughs> and having been a Yes Minister, I know how true that is. I've now found out about 50, 10 years later all the things that I should have done that I didn't do because we had a few Mr Humphreys, Sir Humphreys. Is that right? It's a documentary <laughs> over here. <laughs> That's how they run Australia, folks. Now you know why it is like it is. Canberra does, though, give pride of place to what I think is the most impressive building in the whole country. This is Australia's monument to its war dead. When they built it, they were a nation of barely four million people. Yet they built the biggest war memorial in the world. It was possibly due to the mounting pride in their feats in arms. And the first impact of this came when the world heard of the incredible courage of the Australians at Gallipoli. The heroism on those grim slopes is now legendary. So revered are the war dead that the name of every fallen Australian soldier is inscribed on the walls of this memorial. And if I may add a private note, I remember during the last war speaking to a captured German officer and I asked him who he thought with the best shock troops on the Allied side. And without hesitation, he said the Australians. So it's not without reason that Montgomery chose the Australian 9th Division to carry out a critical attack without which the Battle of Alamein could never have been won. And something else that's not very well known, it was the Australians who were the first Allied troops to defeat the Japanese. Indeed, in the calendar of arms, they are a mighty people. With the morning sunlight falling on seemingly endless names, I have always found this experience very moving. We're near Wagga Wagga now, with my old friend Bill Kerr, the actor. His friend, Bones Reinhardt, is driving us around the bush to see an old mate of his, Miracle Mackenzie, the drover. Look, that must be the that must be the bloke, isn't it, with the sheep yeah. up in the distance? Yes, that's him. That'd be miracle, I think. Well, miracle. Looks like that's a mob of sheep. What are they? What are they called a miracle for? God's because God. he can commit miracles. That's him. That's McKendree. Let's have a guess. Let's. Have, I'll I'll guess that there's about. Let me see. About a thousand head of sheep. How much would you say, Bill? I'd say fifteen hundred. And you? I reckon about three thousand, a bit over three thousand. We sell one of rough guess. Oh, but it take that. Count the legs and divide by four. Well, count the whole one and count the horns and divide by two. Oh, I tell you what, count their willies and divide by one. <laughs> oh, look, he's got four. I just know he's got four dogs with him. Australian Kelpie. Where were they bred down from? British farm dogs? No, no they come from dingo. Dingoes? Yeah, they've got the brain of a dingo and the intelligence of a white man. And they can do anything except talk. And they can't talk, but they won't. Hey, go on there, Bones. All right, now look where you're going, Bones. What are you doing out here? Oh, yeah, I'm looking for a few rabbits. Oh, yeah. Ah. Yeah, you got a lot of nice 
Who's your friend? Oh, a couple of rough, rough nuts from Sydney. Spike Milligan. Pleased to meet you. Mel McKenzie. Good and Good uh, Mel. Good day, Mel. How you doing? Oh, I said you were not us without one of these. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bad His name's Fred. Fred the dog. Yeah. Go Black. And Blackie. Blackie. What, that's, we were watching that's... you coming up the road. I don't know how you do it without the dogs. You can't do it without the dogs, can you? No, no, not really. Good luck. Right <laughs> it's very nice of you to shout me a drink. Well, it's never, a bit never, hot out on these planes. Never, never, never come to a drive without a paper or a grog. No, no. Why well, have you got a hot. couple of horses with you? Always have two, well, in case, case one goes wrong. I see. <laughs> oh, no, being, <laughs> Irish, being Irish, I'd have three in case two go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> how many you got in the mob, Jingle? 3,200. I said 3,000, I said yeah. 3,000. We were having a guess. I said there's 1,000 sheep there, and he no, says no, there's no. 3,001. 3,200. Go and uh, just come up from Bulgul. 3,200? Yeah, going you, you out to Marunda. Yeah, yeah. I counted their feet and divided You'd before. You'd know that country Marunda, wouldn't you, Bill? Oh, I did. Ah. Why are you just poking around and having a look around? Hmm. We were just having a look around the place. You were somebody I'd never seen. A, I'd never seen a sheep being drove, you see. <laughs> what, do you, what, what do you do with them? I, mean, what do I just you? walk them, walk them, feed them. them. Was you Long looking paddock. for fresh feed? Yeah, this is fresh. I go through from here down and back out the Miranda, and then I might turn around and go up the Lockman. Long paddock, they call this. Long, it's a long paddock. We just keep walking them. And how many miles would you push them then? In I only do bit? four or five miles a day. I see. That's you it. know? Yeah. I, I like only do four or five. Though. I've been driving, what, since I was 13. Started driving. My dad was a driver. A good driver and with a good dog. We'll work them back and say the little sick fellas are getting up on the flush grass. That's there. right. That's, that's right. driving. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. Pretty and trying to get in touch with you for four boy. days, and the, and the only numbers we could get was pubs. <laughs> <laughs> so as you got a bloody helm, said, no, you get them at the pubs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, uh, nice to meet you, Bill. Yes, you bet. Nice to see you again sometime. Yeah, what a nice guy. Yeah. yeah. It talks very easy, I think. <laughs> Bill was the first Australian I ever met in Shepherd's Bush, London. Very apt in the circumstances. Can this thing go any faster? <laughs> That's him. I can't find second bloody gear. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I had a foreman once called Singlet because he'd always want me back. <laughs> <laughs> There's some lovely names here, Murrumburra. See, but yeah. that was all, we say it, but the, the Aboriginal says, Murrumburra, Kondobuli. Oh, look, stop this bloody ridiculous accent. <laughs> <laughs> gumly, gumly. Gumly, gumly means mammoth big stick. Wagga, wagga. Not getting wagga, wagga. Murrumburra. They're all double barrel names. Landerain. Grong, grong. Thundigara. Thundi yes, the beautiful, euphonious Quind names. Quindadeli. Kawanindra. Kawa. Kanawindra. Been along. Beggar, beggar. Long to badgery. I'll tell you what. Good day. Now, out here, Jack Crawford was born out here. Jack Crawford had good cricketer, uh, football, uh, tennis, uh, tennis player. player. Yeah, now, where was that? He come from uh, out here, the back of Huron Creek. Yeah. That, now, it's out near the Galore, that near Boree you know. Creek. Now, I've got to get the right place for Jack Crawford. And there's Galong, well, like uh, Galong, Karawana. He never come. No, it, it's out there. It's, and move along. He's near Melbourne. Osborne, he's there, there. Uh, you, Bandy, Woodward. It's not even in the map. That's where he come don't from. Get out of the car, Melbourne. Bill. Right, I don't get out. We're going now. Naranda, uh, you've oh. been all them places. Grong, Grong, Matong, oh, Adelon. I've got to. I can't Arthur stand Levin. this any longer. Oh. Area of Park, West Wylong, Dumbarumba, Huron Creek, Melbourne. No, not Melbourne. Melbourne. Not surprisingly, Bones decided he needed a drink. So did we. So we stopped off in Grong Grong, a small town in the heart of wheat country. Grong Grong? <laughs> the entire population of the town seemed to be in the pub, discussing farming techniques, no doubt. The one thing, Rick, about this country is wherever you go, 
you can get a good yarn out of anybody, believe me. We were, we were, the, drove, we were, were the drover this morning. I've never seen him in my life before. In a couple of minutes, we were having a yarn. A good yarn. Good, funny stories about him and his dogs and his sheep here. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. Yeah. We had a, actually, we had a driver in here a couple of years ago. You can't be drivers. We, uh, it was in this hotel. <laughs> what happened, he walked in and he said, Christ, this is a dead old place, you know. And I said, yeah, I said, we're all just about buggered, mate. I said, just finished harvest, you know. I said, we're just about, we're just starting to celebrate, letting our hair down. He said, I might lighten the place up a bit. So away he goes, comes back in, and he's got this bag with him, just an ordinary chaff bag. And uh, we're sitting there having a drink. And the next minute, this bloody great brown snake starts wriggling around the bar. So <laughs> me close. We're all live in the place. <laughs> there was one bloke sitting with us, Jody Walsh is sitting here. He smashed three bloody stools trying to kill the snake. <laughs> I'm live in the place up. <laughs> I'd love to do it in the London pub, my God, you wouldn't see yeah, the asses for dust, would you? Christ. Oh, dear, dear. <laughs> So farewell, Grong Grong, and back to Gumly Gumly and beyond to go camping with Australia's finest bushmen. Right there, where my dad and my mother are waiting for me, and the pals of my childhood once more I will see. Then no more will I roam when I'm heading straight home along the road to Gundagai. Lovely song. Who wrote that? My name Jack O'Hagan. You can't put this up on your own, fellas. It's impossible. What's the matter, son? You having a bit of trouble? It will need six men. But there's three of us. Yes, that's what I'm telling you. We need six. But there's no way we can't go back there's... to the bloody pub and get... That's about ten miles. I don't down know who ordered this tent an idiot. What happens? I'll show you what happens. Yeah. Uh, What's the name? Oh, Look at unzip this. Wait. Are you in? Just, just a minute, just a minute. Yeah, take it, take it easy, take it easy, take it easy. Right. You're, do, you're doing fine. I'm in, right. Well, now, uh, can you sleep? Could you lay down there? Not, no. Just let all the bloody flies in. They were here before they come with us. Why is it that all Australians think that they are great bushmen? Anyway, these two decided they needed another drink to avoid a nervous breakdown. For some reason, we travelled 50 miles to get one. Hey, we're getting into hilly country now, Spike. I used to be up this way with my dad in 1936. Is this the, uh, what, the foothills of the... Snowy Mountains. Snowy Mountains. Indeed it is. Right up here through Tumut, Tumbarumba, and then you're up into the big country. I used to ride the bike up here when I was a kid. Yeah. Did you, Bones? Yeah, I didn't ride the bike up here, but I used to ride the bike up here. Ah. There's nice. supposed to be gold in this area, isn't it? Indeed. Yes. 75,000 tonnes of gold was taken out of Adelong, and there were 8,000 people living there. So the, oh, the place is much lighter now, is that what you're yeah. saying? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> was there a rush? No, steady flow. A steady flow. <laughs> I used to know steady flow. Oh, what's your great oh, girl? I went out with her mother. Yes. Yeah. A steady flow. <laughs> I'll have a uh, shandy. A cheese. And uh, I'll have a strong shandy. A strong shandy. Yes. There's, there's the hey, hey, look at this. Spike. What's this up on the plummet ceiling? Is that real dark? What is the reason for all the money on the, uh, on the ceiling? Yeah. It's a uh, Christmas drink for the truck drivers of CJ Deans. Well, how do you get it up there? You got $2, I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> How are they going to get it down, for God's sake? Uh, with a big vacuum cleaner. Is that right? Very high-power vacuum cleaner. That's very interesting. I'd like to hear the sound of that engine after it's been over the That's the How? story behind it. Is that real money? Yeah. Are you trying to? 
Modus operandi. Fold $2 bill around a 20-cent coin, insert drawing pin or thumbtack, and throw upwards. Parallel to the floor, son. You can't go wrong. Good. Here we go. Yakamakaka. One, two. There's this uh, this bar in Cessnock, right? New South Wales. Yeah. So the rules are that it shuts down at six o'clock, right? So the, all the blokes are working there. They only get half an hour's drinking time, right? So what they've done is it gets so crowded, you can book 18 inches of the bar. You can book 18 inches of the bar. But if you leave it to go to the Danny, another bloke takes it over. So what they've done, they put a whole row of piss tubs along the front of the bar like this. You see the blokes just going there. They're going to go around at the same time. And they've got taps. You wash away taps. You all tap. The tap keeps coming along and turning the taps on like this. Yeah, running water. Yes, yes, my God. It must have been hell in the high summer, though. Oh, God. <laughs> It's going to be a close fit for the three of us. What are you doing? Are you I don't know. I got a bit of rope here. I got off an old grover years ago. Any good to you? No, it's got to be three, Spike. Yeah, but you said you've got to have a veranda. You've got to have an eave over it. Well, no, there's a wall. See, there's a yeah, wall yeah, here. Eve, Eve. That's called an eave. Oh, eave. Eve. Adam or Eve. I'm not thinking that. Look, David. there, there. Look, holding it up there. That's perfect. Yeah. Realise it's upside down. It's upside down. This is the ground sheet. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. These, these buggers. Yes, of course. That's all. It, that's all the problem. That's all we need. Just turn her upside down and we're home well, and home. I said it upside down. Didn't I say, Bill? I said down. Do it, Billy. Didn't I say that, Bill? I heard you. Well, you know, if I be careful, don't put it upside down. I said, didn't I? Well, uh, I it that. looks the same. <laughs> anyway. I said it was upside down. Look here, no good, no good. Look here, really good. Oh, that's lovely. I wonder what the poor people are doing today. <laughs> we are the poor people. Can you sit down? I don't want Jimmy Sharman here now. That's like a job in a circus, putting on one of them bull and circus tents. Oh. Someone's got to relieve me of that teeth. I'm going to relieve myself any minute. <laughs> Hey, what are oh, this? What happened here? Come here, come here, and I'll let that. I, Wait a minute. I can't let go. He tried oh, to yeah. pull them down. He's bloody tried. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> They're always giving you trouble, aren't they? Bill. One down here. <laughs> that was a nasty looking snake I saw then. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the one I tried? <laughs> <laughs> Come You want to see a freshwater crayfish? Yeah, well, he's one of the strangest creatures in the world. He's got three elbows. Spike, I got your brother. For supper, we're having yabbies, or freshwater crayfish, and damper, a sort of unleavened bread made from flour and Murrumbidgee River water. Down in the beautiful river, the old Murrumbidgee River. You've never had a damper made for you, have you? No, Bill. Well. You're going to see how it's done now. All with right, these. All right. With these taloned claws. Damper was gobbled up by thousands of bushmen in the days before self-raising flour. It's part of Australian folklore, although most Australians have no idea how to make it. It's getting that nice, consistent feeling. I've... What does this remind me of? We, of course, we needed a few day dates and raisins. Where's uh, Bones? Give us a bit of water, Bones. I'll get some water, Bill. 
Now tap eight to get water out of them. God, that's beautiful. Here's one. Phil? Great, lad. My poor dude. Good, just give it a bit of a bit of a tickle. That's a bit of the old Murrumbidgee you got there. Yes. I'm looking forward to the dysentery season, which we're all going to enjoy after this. Round the campfire, we sat spellbound, listening to a totally incomprehensible story right, from Bones. And the old MP stood up. Any old bloke of BMP in a bush dancer. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Tarawana Hall. And I have a good time. So very sorry Mrs. Ray couldn't come here tonight, but she sent a prostitute and said. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, now look. Let's. Didn't let's, you have a watch? Let's put, pull this bugger off. Only come back for it tomorrow, Bill. <laughs> now, there we are, lads. I'll put it okay. down there. But you'll never see another Australian dabber made like it. Now, okay. Now, what about the potatoes, Bill? Beautiful. Jesus. Makes me hungry looking at it. Oh, it's it's burnt to death. Oh, yeah, it's a real Australian dabber. It's burnt to death, Bill. Did but, not. Got but, a wait break. a minute. Wait a you minute, see, mate. you just brush those, that's that surface. Okay, well, yeah. we've got to get it away from this fire to get it cool. Right. <laughs> right? Now you, put just, it. you just watch me, watch this. Would you, would you like to dip it in the, in the river and cool it? No. Now, that's a good idea. No, what about the... No. I didn't dip it in the river and cool it. I thought of that idea. It's a good idea. Look at your break the you are, you are. Didn't I say, didn't I say, down there that was that building, down there that building, didn't oh, I say that building, didn't I say? I did down put it in the river, well, didn't I say that? Is oh, she broken? Yeah, I told you, I said down put it in the river. Take it out, Bill. Wait a minute, said, well, if it's broken now, it's too bloody late, yeah, isn't I it? I said down there it, Bill, I said build down there it, didn't I say that build, didn't I? I said down there it, Bill, down, down, down put it in the river, Bill, I said down put it in the river. Didn't I say that, yeah, Bill, didn't I say yeah. down put it in the river, Bill? I said down put the pot in the river, and Bill put the pot in the river. You got a pot left? Now, have got a pot to piss in? I said, down, put the pot in the river, Bill. The damper was burnt to a cinder. We spent the night and had dinner in a pub. All of the silence of Dean Mailer, because he kept quiet. He talked to other people about other things, but he never said nothing about murdering. Bill, you'll have to translate what Bone says to me. I've been listening for three days. <laughs> I don't understand what he's talking about. Well, I must live here longer. Well, when I said silent, he was silent only about the murder. He used to talk to people. <laughs> he never kept silent for 18 years. So, so much for camping. I said goodbye to the world's greatest bushman and headed for Woi Woi. So that's it. My Australia. Brother Desmond had come up from Sydney where he lives for a farewell sing-song. Goodbye, Desmond. Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, Woi Woi. Goodbye. Australia.